What's up people, this is Sora with a new episode of Absolute Beginner Tutorials for Unreal Engine 4. In this episode we will be looking at the animation blueprint. If you are not familiar with the basic concepts of animation in UE4, it might be a good idea to go through the previous episode first to be able to fully understand what we are going to go through in this episode. Animation blueprints are specialized blueprints whose graphs control the animation of a skeletal mesh. You can create an animation blueprint by right-clicking in the content browser and under create advanced asset under animation, the third one from the top is the animation blueprint. If you click on that, you will have to choose a parents class We'll just take the third person and MVP and then a skeleton and we choose the default skeleton for the third person character. And here we have a new animation blueprint. You can find the animation blueprint for the default third person character by selecting it and then clicking on the little hourglass that you have close to the anim class tab under the animation tab on the details panel. So click on the hourglass and then double click on the third person NMVP to open it. An animation blueprint has two graphs, the event graph and the anim graph, which can be found in the left side of the screen. The event graph, if you double click on it, you will open. The event graph is very similar to a standard blueprint. It receives data from other blueprints and sends them to the anim graph. It specifically, we will be using it to get variables that define the different states of our character in here. Now double click on the anim graph. The anim graph receives data from the event graph. It also drives the skeletal mesh animations by using the state machine, among other things. So, you can see the state machine here. We went through the concept of a state machine in depth in episode 8. If you have not seen that episode, this is a great time to check it out and come back as understanding the concept of states is essential to be able to use the animation blueprint. If you remember from episode 8, we said that a state machine can only be at one state at a time. And we call this state the current state. It can change from one state to another when initiated by a triggering event or condition. And this is called a transition. Now, if you double click on the state machine here, you see a couple of boxes here which represent the different states the character is in, and each one contains uh, animation sequences for their states. So, for example, if you click on the jump start, you see that there is an animation sequence here. And if you double click on that, you see the starting part of the jump animation is contained here. Now, going back to the state machine, we also have some lines here. These lines or arrows represent the transitions. If you hold the mouse cursor over the arrows, you will see the conditions for each transition. For example, here, if you double click on it, there is a boolean variable is in there. If it's true, then we will transition to the next state. And if it's false, the transition will not occur. The conditions for the state machine will be provided and updated by the event graph and sent to the anim graph which calculates the current state of the character and drives the animations for the character. 
To demonstrate how this works, we will look at the jump animation in the default third person character. The jump animation looks something like this. Basically when we press the jump button, the character goes up in air, which is driven by the script in the character blueprint. If we go ahead and open up the uh, character blueprint, which is found under third person BP blueprints and then player. You can see here input action jump when it's pressed then we jump up and when it's released we stop jumping as I said this is totally in the character blueprint and uh, is has nothing to do with the animation blueprint now we go back to the animation blueprint event graph here you can see an event called event blueprint update animation this event triggers at every tick. Then we have the try get pawn owner node, which is basically used to get a reference to our character blueprint and access uh, its components and variables. From here we get a movement component node and then is falling node which is basically true when the character is in air and false when it's on the ground and that is used to update the boolean is in air now go to the anim graph and open the state machine the information that we talked about is available in the anim graph under the variables tab here to the left so you see the variable is in air here and if you double click on the transition between the idle state and jump start you'll see that as we said before this boolean is used to drive this transition so basically when we are in air this transition happens and plays that starting jump animation that we looked at. Then from jump start we have another transition which is basically if the remaining ratio of animation is less than 0 0.1 which is basically when the animation is almost done we transition to the next state which is jump loop and this is the main jump animation the animation we have in the air and from here we have another transition to jump end this transition is when the boolean is false basically when we have touched the ground and from jump end we have another transition to idle state which is again similar to the one that we had in jump start when the animation for jump end is almost over we transition to the idle state again and that's pretty much how jumping works for the default third person character in UE4 using the animation blueprint. So that's it for this time and thank you for watching.